good morning i have come with one module for residential status computation i told you in the beginning residential status computation is divided into three modules first one i have explained the theoretical concepts and one simple problem the second module i have used for working out the problems alone the third module is also only for doing the problems so when i'll complete this module the computation of residential status will be completed so as usual i am going to use powerpoint presentation for the presentation and for doing the problems so after this you will be thorough with the residential status computation so when you will start learning this concept you have to do that first you can refer the ppt then write the questions in your notebook do the problems your own doing you have to do that because once you will learn then only you will learn that every year when i will teach this subject i will make new notebook for this year every year i am doing the practice so many years i am doing that if i'll make some mistake i'll make the marks in the writing so these are all important if a teacher can do that students also can do that if this subject only by practice you can learn my, my by by hurting the subject and all you are not able to clear the subject so you have to remember that it's your hard work and it's a scoring paper you can get 100% marks for this subject and i'm teaching you in the systematic way and in the simple way this will be really helpful for you to score maximum marks for the examination wishing you all the best i am going to the module presentation so the first question is mr g a foreign citizen left india for the first time in the last 20 years on november 25 2017 you have to remember that mr g he is a foreign citizen so for the last 20 years he was in india and he was a resident during the calendar year 2018 he came to india on september 1st and stayed for 20 days so you don't have to calculate that 20 days is directly given in the question in 2019 he did not visit india at all but came to india on january 15 2020 so the number of days stayed in the current previous year we will calculate from january 15th to march 31st because in 2019 he was not there in india so your number of days stayed in the current previous year we will start from january 15th to march 31st determine his residential status for the assessment year 2021 this is the question so as usual you are writing which is your assessment year and which is your previous year current financial year is your assessment year previous financial year is your previous year now the first step we have to do is number of days stayed in the current year that we are going to calculate so i told you january 15 in between the month you have to count with your fingers 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 now january 17 days i told you in between the month you cannot calculate you cannot subtract 31 minus 15 you will end up getting the wrong value so one day also can change the residential status of a person in between the month you have to count using your fingers and one thing you have to remember day of arrival and day of leaving will be counted so that is very important now you know that february we are taking 29 days because it's a leap year then march 31 so totally you are getting 77 days so what is your first basic condition first basic condition is he should have been in india for 182 days or more in the concerned previous year or in the relevant previous year so we have calculated he was here only for 77 days so he has not satisfied the basic condition first basic condition of 182 days now we have to check whether he has satisfied the second basic condition so that is whether he was in india for 60 days or more that is satisfied already we have seen that he was here for 77 days next thing you have to remember number of days stayed in india for 365 days or more during the four immediately preceding previous years he left india only in 2018 that is given in the question before that 20 years he was here so if you see the additional condition so for the four preceding years you have to take so current previous year is 19 to 
So four preceding previous years is 18 to 19, 17 to 18, 16 to 17 and 15 to 16. So you have to remember 18 to 19 is directly given in the question. 17 to 18, how you are getting three, 239 days is explained in the next slide. 16 to 17, full year he was here. So it is 365 days. 15 to 16, it's 366 days because it was a leap year. Now how you got 239 days? Number of days stayed in 17, 18 is April to November 25th. So first April to November 25th. So you have to remember April 13 days, May 31, June 30, July 31, August 31, September 30, October 31 and November 25 days. The day of leaving will be counted. That is how you got 239 days. So number of days stayed in 18, 19 is directly given in the question. You don't have to calculate. It's 20 days. So number of days stayed in India for the four immediately preceding previous years. The total is 990 days. So he has satisfied the second basic condition. We have seen that first basic condition he has not satisfied. Second basic condition is satisfied. Now exception of 60 days we have seen when we, served, when we have learned the theoretical concept. So in 60 days it's possible for few people only the first condition is he should be an Indian citizen to claim that 60 days exemption. He cannot claim this exemption because he is not a foreign citizen. That is why when I was reading the question I was reading that he is a foreign citizen. Now we have to check the additional conditions. So one basic condition is satisfied. He can be a resident and ordinarily resident or he can be a resident and not ordinarily resident. Therefore, what we have to do? So he was, we had to check that. Whether two additional conditions, first one is he should have been a resident in India in two out of ten immediately preceding previous years. So you don't have to calculate that because he was a resident in India up to November 25th, 2017. He was living in India as a resident. So you don't have to calculate that. You can directly write that he was a resident in 2 out of 10 immediately preceding previous years. In the calculation also we have seen that number of days when we calculated. One year we are taking 365 days. One year we are taking 365 days. He was a resident for both the years. When you are taking 4 immediately preceding previous years itself. It is clear that he has satisfied the residential status for those 2 years. Therefore you don't have to calculate the 10 preceding previous years. You, when you learn the problems, the steps, when you learn, when you are more thorough with that, you can see that which all steps you can avoid. So that is how you are doing that. So here I am writing directly because you don't have to waste time for that. Next is, then second additional condition is also satisfied. The condition is whether he was uh, there, he stayed in India for 730 days or more during the seven immediately preceding previous years. When we calculated the four immediately preceding previous years itself, this condition is satisfied. Therefore, he has satisfied the second additional condition also. So now the situation is he has satisfied one basic condition and both the additional conditions. So he is a resident and ordinarily resident in India by satisfying one basic condition and both the additional conditions. This is very very important resident and ordinarily resident. You have to write that because if it's resident and not ordinarily resident, the situation or the conditions are different. So we'll go to the next problem. Mr. A, a senior scientist was posted in Africa by the central government for a period of three years on 15 September 2019. So he had to remember that he will get some exemption because he was, a, he was posted by the central government in Africa. So this calculation will be different. He was never left India before. So that meaning... Till 2019 he was a resident. All the years he was there. So when you have to check the first additional condition. You don't have to write that and calculate. You can directly say that he was a resident. Because the clue is there in the question itself. Find out his residential status for the assessment year 2021. Now as usual we are writing assessment year and previous year. Now by now you might have learned that how to write the assessment year and previous year. Assessment year is current financial year. And previous year is previous financial year. Number of days stayed in the relevant previous year. You have to calculate April 1st to September 15th. So April is 30 days, May 31 days, 
June 30, July 31, August 31 and September 15. So totally you are getting 168 days. Now we have to remember first basic condition is 182 days. So he has not satisfied the first basic condition of 182 days stay in India in the relevant previous year. Now we have to remember that when I was reading the question itself I told you he will get the exemption of that he is an employee posted by the central government. So his stay has to be 182 days in the current previous year to be considered as a residential person. For the residential status it's very important he should have been in India for 182 days or more because he will cover under the exemption for 60 days. We have seen that in the theoretical part when a person is going on a, in an Indian crew, as it, in the ship as an Indian crew. Then he is posted abroad. He is working for employee. He is going out of the country for employment purpose. All these conditions. So here in the question itself, it's clearly mentioned that he is posted in Africa by the central government. So he has to be in India for 182 days. Then only he will be considered as a resident. So his residential status is he is not a, he is a non-resident for the assess assessment year 2021. You don't have to check the second basic condition. You can say that he is a non-resident because that 182 days condition. He can claim the 60 days exemption and he is not a resident for the year assessment year 2021. Now the next question is, B, a citizen of India went to Germany for the first time on 15-9-2018 on a business trip. So you have to remember that the question itself some clues there. First time he is going out to Germany. That meaning till 2018 he was a resident. Now you can avoid certain steps based on the clue what you are getting. He returned to India on 5-6-2019. June 5th he is returning in 2019. During his stay in Germany he maintained his residential house in India. Actually this information we have nothing to do with the residential status computation. You have to be very clear about this. We don't have to consider this statement at all. But just to confuse the students, if you are not thorough with the theoretical parts, you will make mistakes. So that is why they are including such statements in the computation. So you have to remember that during his stay in Germany, he maintained his residential house in India. That has nothing to do with the residential status computation. We calculate based on number of days he was in India. So what will be his residential status for the assessment year 2021? That is the question. Now assessment year you wrote, previous year you wrote. Next is number of days stayed in the relevant previous year. 5th June 2019 to 31st March 2020. Now you have to calculate. June 5th. So I told you in between the month you have to calculate using your fingers. You cannot 30 minus 5 is not. You will not. You will get only 25 days. That is not the correct calculation. One day can change. make a change in the determination of residential status the computation can go wrong you have to use your fingers and count five day of arrival is also counted day of leaving also is counted so five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty june you are getting twenty six days july is thirty one days August 31, September 30, October 31, November 30, December 31, January 31 and February 29 because it's a leap year and March 31. So he is he was there in the previous year for 301 days. Now you have to remember whether he has satisfied the first basic condition. Yes, he has satisfied the first basic condition of 182 days. Next is whether he has satisfied the second basic condition of 60 days in the relevant previous year and 365 days or more in the four immediately preceding previous years. You know that second basic condition is divided into two sections. First is 60 days. We have already seen that he was there for 301 days. So you don't have to calculate it again. He has satisfied that part. Second one is 365 days or more in the four immediately preceding previous years. There was a clue in the question. He was leaving the country for the first time in 2018. That meaning till 2018 he was a resident. So if he was there for one year also 365 days will be fulfilled. So you don't have to compute. You can directly say that he was there for 365 days or more in the four immediately preceding previous years. See I told you when you will learn that you will automatically learn. Where all you can skip the steps. 
So he is satisfying both the basic conditions. Now we have to see whether he is fulfilling additional conditions. Question says that he left the country for the first time in 2018. So that meaning if we take 10 preceding previous years, he was a resident in 2 out of 10 immediately preceding previous years. Therefore, he has satisfied the first additional condition. Second condition is he was there in India for 730 days or more. That also you don't have to calculate. It's very clear. 2018 he is leaving the country meaning all the other years he was there. So he has satisfied the second additional condition also. Now coming to the residential status. He has satisfied both the basic conditions and both the additional conditions. Therefore he was a resident and ordinarily resident. Now with this we have come to the end of the computation of residential status. So this is what we are going to do with that module and what I hope you have learned this module. So I am coming with the fourth module that is distinction between capital and revenue that I will come with the explanation in the next module. Thank you.